Welcome back to Red Beard's Garage and on today's episode we're going to start a new chassis build and we're going to do a full in-depth series on how I come up with a chassis design. Uh, for this chassis we're going to be using trailing arms. You can buy these trailing arms from Go Power Sports actually. They're for a 300cc go-kart and they are really well built. They carry everything to use with them. So they have the CVs, the jack shaft, the wheel hubs, the bearings, everything. So it's gonna be a really quick design because we don't have to do the rear suspension other than we may have to lengthen the CVs. For the power plant for this buggy, we're gonna be using a 300cc liquid cooled engine. This is off a, uh, I think it's off a Tau Tau ATV style. So it's four speed with reverse, liquid cooled, has a clutch and everything. This is gonna be a two seater. You can see we have one of our fake leather or pleather racing seat set up here. So I always start off uh, with the floor pan of the buggy. So your design and your um, your way to build things is what makes you unique and different than everybody else. So um, this might be the different way than you do it, but this is how we do it here. So we luckily have this fabrication table from Sigmund. Uh, you can look at these on quantummachinerygroup.com. They have awesome tables. They have more affordable units from their thinner, you know, this has the side walls where you can bolt stuff on the side. You can get ones without that. That saves you uh, quite a bit of money. Ours is plasma nitrate coated, so spatter and rust and stuff will not stick to the table, but you can get lower class tables, like I said. So check out the links in the video for this table and all the fixtures. Uh, but since we have this, we got a good level surface and we have all these measurements and we can put stops wherever we need them for the width of our frame. So if you notice, I have these stops back here. So from this side of the table to those stops is 50 inches. That's how wide I want it to make it comfortable for two heavy Americans to sit in this chassis. Uh, exhibit A. And then we got it 56-ish inches long. This is a metric table. So you can see my line is at 50 inches, but it's a hair bit over. So that's not gonna you know, really matter. But uh, if you don't have a flat weld table, concrete's perfectly fine. Just I like to put a piece of plywood down and try to level it out. You want to start with a level surface because when you're putting tubes and stuff on, you can make sure everything's level when you build up from that. Uh, so 56 inch by 50 inch, this is just my floor pan. Then we can go off the front of the buggy and do our front suspension design. Now I've made a template or a jig for my buggy A-arms and it's a pretty universal set of A-arms, but the wider your A-arms are, it's going to give you more travel out here. So say we only have like an eight inch section from where the A-arms hook and we have, you know, 20 inch A-arms, then we're gonna get a ton of travel out here for minimal travel up here. And you can have a shock with shorter throw, like a Go Power Sports 150 car only has about three, three and a half inches of travel. We could actually, we're not using that style shock on this, but if we was to want to use it, we could use a three inch travel shock right here but we'd still have a ton of travel at our tire because of the A-arm so long. Hope this makes sense. The first thing I'm gonna do is do two 90 bends in a piece of tube that'll start at the back of my floor pan. I get my tube cut in 10 foot sections. Uh, they're 20 foot long when you buy them. I have them cut them down to 10 foot sections. So I'll just mark a center line on it and go off of there. And I'll show you how I measure for where my bends need to start. And this is completely different for everybody too. I do a certain way and it works really well. So first thing we're gonna take our Nargesa CC60 bender. This is the best tool in the garage. It's super nice. And uh, we're gonna bend up 290s because it's nice to have some baseline bends hanging on the shelf, like 290s, 245s, because you can lay those out on concrete or in our case, our weld table and figure out if that bend's gonna work for us. You'll see. So first we got two pieces of one inch tube, all cleaned up, no rust on them. We're gonna throw them in the bender and do two 90s and uh, then we'll show you how we lay out our floor. Now we already know that our over bend is five degrees. So that's what we need to over bend the tube so when the, it springs back it's an actual 90 degree bend so we have everything set we got our speed all the way up so now on this bender this is going to vary for you know if you're using a harbor freight bender or whatever but ours now we just got to push the pedal and it's going to do the bending <laughs> So 
So now what I'm gonna do is I started this bend at one foot. So I'm gonna go off of the end of the bend one foot, cut it off, and I got a perfect 90 with one foot leg length. And then we're gonna bend one more so we have two 90s to play with. And these will go on my shelf. So if in later use uh, in building chassis, we can have these to do the same thing that we're about to use them for. So if you look, the gauge says 89.7. That's as about as close as we're gonna to get to a 90 degree bend. So again, we can, and links to these uh, angle finders are in the video description. I, I got a, I think this is like a 20 inch one. Yeah, 20 inch, <laughs> uh, 20 inch one, probably 22 counting this. And then we got a seven inch. It's really good to have these as well. So now we can cut that leg length off and bend one more. So now that we've got our two 90s, you can clearly see, of course, that was my mark where I started the bend. On my bender, it has a small line that we line this up. And if I'm doing a 90, a 180, any bend, I'm using seam tubing. So this is wrapped around and welded. So there's a weld line. So in this tubing, that's the weakest spot. So you always want that in the neutral position. If you was to do it uh, on the outside or the inside of the bend, it could stress and crack. So it'd be weak here and it would can crinkle here. I've never had it happen, but it's safe to just put it in a neutral position top or bottom. If I was to lay this right here, I know my bend needs to start right there to achieve this width and I can lay this one over there, measure the distance in between these and that's where I can start each 90 degree bend to have a perfect hoop back here to lay in and then I can start going off of it from there. Is this making sense? reason I put this stop here is because that's the back of my buggy so now I can push that evenly against that and also I put this stop here to give me support here because if this wasn't here it just want to fall so one thing I want to do is I'm going to actually move this block in one notch because you can see my stop is falling on the bend I want it to fall right here on the flat spot these don't have to be so precise uh, back in the day when we built the twin engine, uh, that puppy ain't precise, but mm -hmm. it works out really well and we built it on concrete. So just use what tools you have at your disposal. So now we can get that butted up really nice on that, butted up we know that's a perfect 90. And with our table we could clamp this down if we felt like we needed to but all we're doing is getting measurements right now okay so now we got those dead in there so i can measure from this mark to that silver mark we can know exactly how wide we need to start our bend so 43 inches if we put our mark 43 inches apart that hoop should fall almost perfect in here and there could be just a hair bit of play but again that's okay because don't have to be that precise. And then once we get this bent, of course we'll have a long leg length. We're not gonna do nothing with that leg length until we find out what bend we want here to start going to the front and cap off. Because I want good floor space on this buggy because I'm gonna have a clutch, brake, and gas pedal. So we need to make sure we don't do too much taper in. We want it to be a little wider. Then we can add a look to it with the front end. So it's ripe in July. So I had to put my bandana on. Uh, so we have this piece of tube. We measure dead center and put a mark at dead center of this piece too. We know we need to start our bends 43 inches apart from each other, so we end up with this same width. So what I'm gonna do is divide 43 and a half and measure that off of this mark, which is 21 and a half. 43 divided by two, keep yourself in school. So I'm gonna go from dead center, right there, so 21, so that's where one bend is going to start so the bend needs to happen after this and if you need to remind yourself you can put an x meaning the bend needs to happen in this area not past this we have made that mistake before didn't mark you know and get beside ourselves. you live and learn yeah and then you waste tubing <laughs> and money and then the bill gets more expensive Is 
this is one inch tubing. Tube is the outside diameter, pipe is the inside diameter. Uh, we have this axle clamp. This is what you'd use to hold stuff still on an axle and it fits perfect on there. So we can lay that in line and make a mark all the way around the tube. It's pretty handy. You can buy these super cheap if uh, you need like a one and a quarter and then a one and a half. You can buy them on eBay because I think Go Power Sports only carries one inch and one and a quarter. Now I gotta put my die back to the home position on this particular bender. Every bender is different. Uh, this one, you just hold down on the pedal, the opposite pedal, it'll go back to the home position and be ready for the second bend. Got it off the bender, see if it fits. Look at that, look at that. Dead on 50 inches. Go to an off and all this is going to do is keep this pushed all the way this way. Get all the way this it's way. It's right on your line over here. Yeah, so perfect. it was actually perfectly 50 inches. I just forgot we was doing measurements on metric by where we had our block set. So, all right, so you can tell if we measure from this to this, we know we need 25 to the center of the table. And I did have to cut four inches off this side. That's why this is shorter than that, or three inches, because we haven't got a pallet jack for our bender yet. So our bender is kind of stationary and it was hitting, we had to run the tube a little bit inside that door, so I had to cut three inches off of it to make it fit. So this is the center of our buggy's floor pan right here. That's dead center, if we're going off this side of the table. So, if we measure this, it should be 25. We can start throwing seats up there, see how we lock it, and then we can start finding out what bin we need to do here and here to complete our floor pan. Okay, so off camera, I made some test bins. So basically, we have clamp onto our hoop. This is a 10 degree bin. So what I did was, again, this is one of the handiest tools you'll ever get uh, for building roll cages. But we set this at zero, we opened it up, and we kind of laid it against our, our squares and looked at what kind of a bin we wanted to give me clearance. Uh, clearance. Remember, on this buggy, we're having a clutch, brake, and throttle. On a normal buggy, you can go in a little bit more aggressive, and that'll just make your front end a little bit more narrow, kind of like my buggy. Uh, but this one, we want a little wider, because I want it to be super comfortable, plenty of leg room, and to work that clutch and everything. So we use this to find out that a 10 degree, I went ahead and bent a 20 as well. So now, again, this is our test piece, put on the shelf, and I'm gonna TIG weld 20 on it. And I'm gonna take a, a Dremel, and I'm gonna barely scar the tubing where the bend starts so we'll be able to use this for mock-ups later just like we're doing these 90s so it looks like a 10 degree bend is what i'm going to want i put this as a reference to kind of give me a baseline so then this is a 75 degree bend that tells me if i take a piece of tube remember this is our center line of our buggy so that's dead center of the measurements of our buggy what we can do is measure this from that and we can take a new piece of tube and make these two marks do a 75 degree bend. Then we can kind of lay it on there and find out where we want our 10 degree bend needs to start. So now, like I said, we can get a new piece of tube, make these two 75 degree bends, lay it in there, and it should equal up as long as we go off our center line here, which is 15 inches from our center. So we'll do 15 inches off the center of the tube do two 75 degree bends, making sure that we put our bend on the right side of the mark. So both sides will need tweaked out just a hair. So means we can mark to cut both tubes wherever it's just convenient and we'll cut both of them off. We can sleeve it, slide it all together, tack weld it up, clamp it to the table, and we have our four bend.
So guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it was a really long video just to build a floor pan, but these same principles will follow through the whole entire buggy. You can build your roll cage like this using these pre-made bins. It's super helpful just have them sitting around. So uh, we just wanted to give a breakdown of, uh, down of how we come up with our chassis, how we come up with our floor pan. And uh, it's really simple. Once you build one, it'll get easier and easier, of course. Uh, and I know a lot of people don't have fixture tables like this. Believe me, we build a lot of stuff on concrete. Our concrete was unlevel, so we'd make the whole buggy unlevel like the concrete was. So at the end of the day, the buggy was actually level when we got through with it. So if our concrete was pitched a little bit, we made our buggy pitched a little bit. And uh, it actually worked out pretty well. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this series. We've been asked a ton of how we come up with buggy designs and stuff. It's all off the top of my head. Uh, we just build it as we go. Sometimes we bend a piece, we don't like it, we cut it off, and we'll use that piece on down the line. So we'll be breaking this whole buggy down into segments. So front end will be all in one video, how I do my A-arms and everything. Uh, next will be row cage, and then we'll move on to front end, and then I do the rear suspension and mount the engine. So hope you guys are looking forward to this series. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Make sure to check out the links in the video description. They do help us out, and all these parts are in it other than the engine, because we did get this engine out of California. I may be able to find some links on Amazon or eBay, but uh, a simple buy an old junker four-wheeler that runs and use the engine off of it if you want to replicate this build. So let us know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you, and God bless.